Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios and brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's a Philadelphia co-owner, vice president, funeral director of, of, of an amazing and a long-standing traditional um, funeral home in the Philadelphia area. He's part of a five-generational family in the funeral industry established by his great-great-grandfather back in 1887, and of course, you know, his uh, funeral home uh, provides uh, funeral and cremation services, plus uh, veteran services, out-of-state transport, and also memorial services uh, while honoring tradition. And what makes this so unique? He also adapts to the um, number of changes uh, in the funeral industry and uh, comparing you know, what was before to today. And what makes this um, funeral home unique? We'll find out live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Philadelphia, the co-owner, vice president, and funeral director of Gold. Goldstein's, Rosenberg's, Raphael Sachs Funeral Home. And we're going to quiz you on this afterwards, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the multi talented Brett Schwartz. Brett, Brett, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate the intro. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure Ooh. to be here. You know, and that was quite a mouthful, I got to say that. I love challenges, I got to say that. So, <laughs> so remember, so everybody, Goldstein's, Rosenberg's, Raphael Sachs Funeral Home. So we you want that. It. We want that to get in the, the memory banks, and of course, um, we'll have a quiz afterwards. So you're your co-owner, vice president, and uh, funeral director of Gold Signs, Rosenberg's uh, Rayfield Sachs Funeral Home uh, in the Philadelphia area, part of a five-generational uh, family in the funeral industry established by your great-great-grandfather back in 1887. You also provide sure. funeral and cremation services, and plus other services for ve veterans, out-of-state transport, memorial services while honoring tradition you also address significant changes in the industry and of course you know you know what really goes behind the funeral home we'll find out and before we get into all that brett first of all tell us how you first got started um well as as you said i am a fifth generation funeral director so i grew up with my father having been a funeral director for all of my life um he did the same and so on and so forth back to my great great grandfather morris rosenberg who started the first of our family uh funeral homes in in the 1870s um i grew up in it i started working there when i was 14 back in 1992 um worked in uh, at the funeral home summer breaks vacations um i ended up doing a work study program there in high school wow uh, after high school went to penn state I uh, graduated from there with a degree in business, uh, followed that with uh, mortuary school. I went to a place called Gupton Jones College of Funeral Service in Atlanta uh, after I graduated from Penn State. And then I came into the business. I would, became a licensed funeral director in 2003. And uh, this marks my 30th year uh, as a licensed funeral director. Wow, you really kept that up very well, and that's so amazing. And of course, you know, what was that per one precise moment that simply influenced what you're doing for the rest of your career? And the and the fact that fifth generational, y'all, you know, what was that one one precise moment simply says, "I'm going to keep this going." I probably have to say, um, you know, over the years, I lost a number of family members. I lost friends. Um, my mother died. Um, in 1993 um oh and i apologize it was 20 years that i've been licensed oh, wow. uh, <laughs> it's okay yeah. but but 30 years since my mom was gone and um having experienced a loss so close um so close so personal uh, i think i decided at some point where i just said you know i just want to help people because it's it's such a hard time um my father being a funeral director he made all the arrangements. I didn't have to do anything, but people that don't have an asset like that in their, in their family to lean on, they don't know what to do. They're in the dark, they're grieving, they're mourning, they're upset. Um, it's in my nature to help people. I always like to help people and it doesn't matter what it is, friends, acquaintances, family, strangers. If I see an angle where I can help somebody, I always try to step in and helping somebody at one of the worst times in their lives is, um, there's, it's just a gratifying experience. There's a lot of satisfaction that comes with that, especially when a family says, thank you. Thank you for helping me through this time in my life. Um, I think I just kind of had that realization given the losses that I had experienced and that kind of culminated with the loss of my mother. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, you know, going back, you know, way back in 1887 by a great, great grandfather and which was known back then as the Morris Rosenberg uh, 
furnishing undertaker maybe a bit of history about that and um you know how did he first get started and what was his um that led him to his calling and starting um, a funeral service going back to 1887 so I haven't gotten all the history there. Um, my father's family has always been a bit of an enigma, um, but I can tell you that um, it actually was it ended up. It actually was 1877. Um, 1877. Remember, okay. Yeah, which is okay, not a problem. Listen, it, it's the 1800s. I mean, we can both agree on that. <laughs> Who's um, counting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. At that point, um, but you know, I, I don't know what his calling was initially, but I think. Um, you know, after he having started it uh, in the 1870s, like I said, you know, he had a son named Judah. Judah followed in his family's footsteps. That's kind of what the funeral service industry breeds. Um, not always, but a lot of family businesses that hopefully last for generations, in our case, fifth generation, which is a, a, a beautiful thing. Some don't make it as long. I'm glad that we have. But, uh, you know, given the circumstances, it was um, my great great grandfather Morris, his son Judah. Um, my gra uh, great grandfather Judah, however, had my grandmother Jane. Uh, Jane did not come into the business, but she married Bernard Schwartz. He went to uh, University of Pennsylvania for law school, and for whatever reason, that career did not pan out. He came into the business, changing the lineage name to Schwartz, but the same family nonetheless. Um, my father was interested, he followed suit, and, uh, and so did I. Wow, that is amazing going down the generations as well, too. And of course, you know, it takes special skills as well, too, you know, to, um, you know, execute a funeral, bring comfort and everything else, you know, just having a special skill set. What are some of the um, other special skills that, you know, you know, one must possess? Um, I would say first and foremost, empathy. You, you can't just be sympathetic to the families that you serve. You need to really put yourself in their shoes and understand that every family you serve is different. They're all experienced some form of grief. They're all in mourning in some way, shape, or form. Um, and you really need to take a step back. And when you're serving your families, realize that each one is unique, but each one needs that same same sense of, of deep and meaningful empathy that you can provide and come across the table with. Uh, first and foremost, that 110% through and through. Um, you also need to be able to, um, almost like an event planner. There's a lot of moving pieces and you need to be able to put it all together and you need to um, execute that as best as you possibly can. Um, not unlike a wedding, um, a funeral, you, you get one shot. Um, you get one shot to make a family, I wouldn't say happy is the right word, but I think to make them feel as though they've had the loving, honorable tribute for their loved one uh, that they were looking for, you get one chance to do it. And you need to be able to put all those pieces together, all those moving parts, and make sure it all comes together, culminating in a funeral that has a deep, lasting impact that gives them a sense of um, closure. Um, and leaving them as though they've, um, you know, done right by their loved ones. Um, and that that's that's difficult. It really is. Um, some families are very demanding and, and, and rightfully so. I don't begrudge them anything. Um, but, you know, they want a lot and you have to be able to give a lot. Um, you also need to be able to put in a lot of hours. Um, you need to be able to deal with a lot of high stress situations. Um, you need a lot of patience, um, understanding, compassion. Um, and you need to be gentle. Mm, yes, yes. And I, and I think that seems to combine all into one as well, too. You talk about, you know, stressful situations, you know, maybe some examples. What was like the most uh, stressful you guys ever encountered and how did you guys um, ma manage to handle it? Of course, it's a, a lesson uh, for those who want to be a funeral director and get involved in the funeral business. Um, for our funeral home, I think we've had different aspects of our business over the years that were a bit, um, bit stressful in certain ways. Um, I would say the most, the most recent that I could recall and probably the, the go-to, um, would be the pandemic. <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, you know, 
when COVID really hit hard in March of 2020, um, I don't think anybody was prepared for what was coming, especially funeral directors. Um, it, literally overnight, um, we just, the phone just started ringing and ringing and ringing and it, it just didn't stop. Um, <clears throat> we were fortunate enough to make it through most of the pandemic um, pretty unscathed in terms of um, COVID within our company. But um, in terms of volume, in terms of how quickly we needed to mobilize, how quickly we needed to put um, strategies in place to keep, uh, to keep ourselves safe, to keep our staff safe, to keep the families we were serving safe, to um, work with the cemeteries and make sure that everybody was on the same page. Uh, it was, it was a time to say the least. Uh, I know for me personally, um, I was in a place where my, my wife was working and, you know, when people think frontline workers, they think um, doctors, nurses, um, police, paramedics, fire. Um, I don't know if you might consider us frontline workers, but we certainly had to go into work. We never stopped. It got to a point where for me personally, um, I was working four 10 to 12 hour days a week. My wife was working three 10 to 12 hour days in the uh, at her work. She was a social worker at an assisted living community um, and two days from home. And we were like two ships passing in the night for three months. Wow. Um, it was it was that and our children uh, who at the time were, let's see, it was March of 2020. So my son Ryder was probably two and a half. My daughter Isla was uh, turned one. Wow. Right when the world shut down. Actually, the weekend the world shut down uh, was supposed to be her birthday party. Oh, my goodness. Birthday. Yeah. Ooh. So we had two under three years old um, and we were working nonstop. Um, it was just, you know, you got to a point where you would see a certain number on the caller ID and you knew that you were going to get a call that somebody had passed and it was COVID. Um it was just, it was almost indescribable. Um, I, I, I count us as fortunate in the fact that we didn't have any positive cases of COVID within our company for a long time throughout the pandemic, thank God. But also that we weren't like some of the funeral homes that we saw, some of the funeral homes that we work with in, in other areas of the country, New York City especially, was indescribable. Mm. Um Indescribable. Um, they, they, the, their facilities didn't even have enough enough room to serve the families that they needed to. It was unreal. Um, we did well. Um, I, I, and I thank God every day that we managed to get through it the way that we did. But I think that we, um, you know, we put strategies and policies and guidelines and procedures in place um, that kept us safe and kept everybody safe. Um, I have to say that I feel terrible for the families that we serve because they, they probably didn't get the sense of closure that we would have loved to provide. Um, they of course had our sympathies. We gave them 110% of everything that we had uh, in order to make whatever tribute we could as meaningful as possible, but it, it was, it was challenging. Um, but I think that overall we did well. Um, I think the feedback we, we, we got from our families, um, some of the kind words we got, thank you for being here at a time when, businesses are shut down and, and people aren't going to work, you know, thank you. And thank you. And thank you. And, and I appreciate that because it was, it was so hard to serve them the way we, we would want to. Um, but we didn't have a choice. We were flying blind. We didn't know, especially in the beginning, what would be, um, you know, how to keep ourselves safe, how to keep our sa staff safe, how to keep the family safe. Um, and we just had to figure it out, but, but we did. Um, but that was that was definitely the hardest time I can think of in, in my career and probably in the funeral homes history. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it certainly kept it together, too, that uh, you also provide um, various services and addressing the changes. And uh, what makes this uh, wonderful uh, funeral home stands out? We'll find out with uh, Brett Shorts, uh, 
But Mark Schwartz of uh, Goldstein's, Rosenberg's, Rayfield, Sachs Funeral Home. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960 for email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Widener's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, International War Ring author Mia Moslenzia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Moslenzia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries. Two strangers, one target. Where truth is illusion and those who love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has got great reviews. And Evil have endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Ghost Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com or 40 podcast platforms. Heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music. Also on Podbean, Odyssey, and more. Follow us on you and subscribe on YouTube. Also on um, BitChute and Rumble. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Take us with you on any mobile device. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com, check out the Mike Widener Show podcast, and for more great gift ideas like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, plus books like uh, Missing, Wrinkles, and um, more, Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today and support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and themikewidenershow.com. We're here with uh, Philadelphia co-owner, vice president, and field director of Goldstein's, Rosenberg's, Rayfield Sachs Funeral Home, Brett Schwartz here on the Mike Wagner Show. And, um, you know, we talked about, um, y- you know, how he came to the funeral business and some of the challenges. You also provide funeral and cremation services. And um, also you, you provide services for the veterans, uh, state transport, memorial services while honoring tradition. And um, expand on more of the services um, that you provide what makes yourself um, stand out, especially from the rest. Goldstein's Rosenberg's Rayfield Sachs, again, you know, being a fifth generation funeral home, I think is a real testament to uh, to the service we provide, um, because I don't think we would have lasted if we didn't provide exceptional service to the families that we serve. Um, as you mentioned, um, we, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my apologies. It's okay. <laughs> um, um, you know, as you stated, uh, we do provide all those services, uh, funeral services, both uh, in our chapels, uh, at houses of worship, um, Sometimes just a graveside. Uh, we do provide services such as out of state transport, if need be. We do love to honor our veterans because our veterans uh, deserve it in spades. Uh, we do provide cremation services as well, memorial services. And we also serve uh, interfaith families, which is uh, an important thing to touch on because that's becoming quite the trend as time goes on. Uh, what I mean by that is simply you have one person that's, say, for example, Jewish in a marriage and the other person that is not. So let's just say you're serving the Jewish family first. Well, we want people to know that the spouse who's not Jewish can also be served by the same funeral home. Uh, It's important to note that while over the years we have served um, the community of Philadelphia and I would say primarily the Jewish community throughout Philadelphia, we are always a funeral home first and a Jewish funeral home second. Uh, We serve people of all walks of life and all faiths. Um, And that's, pretty been pretty consistent over the years um you know the other thing to note is is that we also try to help people in need uh there's people that come to our doors sometimes and say we simply can't afford a funeral and we don't want to take the lesser expensive route of cremation what can you do we are more than happy to help people in need 110 percent um i think that what makes us stand out is that we provide exceptional services we have been for over 100 years now uh, in a very caring, meaningful, dignified, um, and loving and gentle way. Um, we have a way of walking our families through things step by step, um, very carefully, very uh, empathetically, as I said before, and just kind of holding their hands through the process. You know, one of the things I think sometimes that uh, as a funeral director, you have to keep in check is that, you know, 
for example, myself, I've been doing this for 20 years now. I've served hundreds, probably thousands of families. But for a family that I serve, let's say tomorrow, it's their first time. It might not be my first time, but it's theirs. So I have to remember that and keep that in check. So um, I don't sound robotic and generic and scripted um, because that's not what they deserve. That's not what they would want. That's not what their loved ones want. Uh, so I have to kind of remember that as I go on and we all do. And I think we do an excellent job of doing that, serving the families in need. Mm-hmm. And, and of course the changes in the industry hit upon the, um, the interfaith marriages requests for cremation. And of course, you know, pre-arrangements, uh, honoring veterans and everything else. And uh, of course, a lot of changes happening in the industry. Um, you know, you know, what, what are some of the changes you've experienced, like say, you know, compared to, you know, like I said, 20 years you've been in the business or you like 30, 40 years ago? Um, a lot of things, you know, demographically things have changed over the years where our funeral home locations are. We have one in, in Philadelphia, as you had mentioned earlier. We also have one in the northern suburbs of Philadelphia, a town called Southampton. Um, so the demographics around those facilities have changed over the years. Um, the climate has changed. Um I would also say that um, the number of families we served have changed over the years. There's been ebbs and flows with different generations of people passing. Um, I would say now as, you know, the baby boomers start to pass, we are probably going to start to see an uptick naturally in funerals. Um, I would say that before that, um, there was quite a large boom in the early to mid 90s. Um, Things have kind of changed over the years also in terms of uh, location. You know, years ago, everybody was local. Now people are transient. People are dying all over the country. And we serve people. We've probably served people in almost all 50 states. I don't know if we've served people in Brisbane, North Dakota, but I'm sure at some point we probably have. Um, (laughs) I I know most recently we served a family in Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas. Um, You know, these things happen all the time. Um, People uh, pass away when they are out of the country, out of state, out of the country. Philadelphia is known for its what we call snowbirds. So you have people that uh, migrate to Florida for the winter and uh, live in in the Philadelphia area in the warmer months because it's too hot down there. So uh, these are things that didn't happen quite as much years ago. But you also have people living longer. Um, I could tell you that uh, a few years back, I personally oversaw the funeral of the oldest living woman in Florida. She was 112. Wow. 112? Daughter, wow. 112. Amazing. Her daughter was her daughter was 87 years old. It was oh. it was remarkable. Um and you know it's interesting too because a lot of times funerals for older people there's not a lot of people left. There was probably 50 people there standing at graveside. It was such an amazing tribute, but You know, I remember as a kid, when you heard somebody living over 100, it was such a rarity. We probably bury and serve uh, dozens of people that are well into their 90s and over 100 yearly, which to me is is remarkable. Um, But so you have people that are living longer um, and they're more vibrant into their older age. Um, You know, 80 is not that old anymore. Um, it's, it's unbelievable, but, uh, so you have those, I, you have those, and then you also have the families that you serve want different services. You hit on cremation. Um, you know, cremation for us has not been the way it has been for other funeral homes around the country and around the world. Um, but our families still want it and we provide it and, uh, we have to constantly come up with different offerings for our families based on the response we get and what they might want. Um, Cremation definitely offers a multitude of options and a a different kind of flexibility than a traditional burial has. And those are things that we do our best to navigate uh, to give our families exactly what they want, but also to kind of um, be proactive about it and try to um, determine what they might want or things that we can offer them that they might not even be aware of. Mm. Um, and that's challenging as well, too, um, trying to, to, to stay one step ahead um, and say to a family, well, hey, you know, you were considering this, but, but how about this? You know, you, you might not be familiar. Let me explain this to you and, 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 and you know, see what you think about that. Um, 
and there's a lot. Um, the funeral industry is slow to change, but ever ever changing nonetheless. Um, new companies come to the forefront every day with something new to offer. Um, and we have to consider all those things and considering our family's wants and needs and, uh, and do our best to offer that to the families we serve. And I think we do it well. And, and what's the next uh, trend that you see in the funeral industry? Um, I, I would say definitely cremation is, uh, is probably the bigger trend. Um, interfaith marriage, again, as we touched on. Um, I would also say the graveside services, though, you know. Years ago, it was almost a standard to have a funeral home in one of our locations and one of our chapels, again, in, in, in Philadelphia and in, in Southampton, Pennsylvania, and then have a, a funeral procession to the cemetery. Nowadays, people don't want to do that um, for a multitude of reasons. Uh, funeral processions are not the safest anymore. Uh, people driving around us are on their phones or listening to the radio. They're texting and driving, unfortunately. They're not paying attention. Oh, to my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, people and people don't want to deal with that. They also don't want to deal with the time you show up at the funeral home. You're there for quite a while before the service starts. You have your service. So you might be there uh, an hour and a half for two hours. And then you might have anywhere from a 15 minute to almost an hour ride to a cemetery and another half hour cemetery. A lot of people don't want that anymore. Uh, with a graveside service, it makes it a bit simpler. Everybody meets at the cemetery. You have a service, and then you go wherever you go. You might go out to a meal of condolence. You might go back to somebody's home. Um, but it simplifies things a bit. And uh, I think that more and more people people want that. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is definitely kind of dependent, especially on how traditional a um, a family might be, but also how many people they're expecting. But Nonetheless, graveside service is definitely uh, on the rise as compared to how it used to be. Uh, again, cremation, interfaith, and we 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 serve um, we serve our families in that in those capacities uh, in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I also noticed too that uh, live streaming uh, funerals have become um, the thing as well too. That's pretty much on the uh, up and up live stream funerals. So yeah, that was something I didn't touch on. I didn't hadn't gotten too specific in funerals, but since you since you brought it up, I certainly will. Um, during COVID, um, I think that Zoom became the thing for everybody in the world. Um, God, I wish I had had stock in Zoom. Um, <laughs> don't we all? Just like uh, we, IBM back in the day, Apple or whatever, you know, <laughs> or even Facebook. One hundred ten percent, absolutely. Um, oh my gosh! But yeah, no, no, no. I mean, we were serving our families via Zoom primarily during services, but now we can do it just to, to convene with them to make arrangements. But you know, there were times uh, during the height of the pandemic where I would be at a cemetery, and it would be me, a tripod, and an iPad. And a Zoom, the casket, obviously, and the person that had passed, there would not be a single person there. That was kind of how that started. Um, and then it kind of grew from there. There might be a handful of people at the cemetery and everybody else via Zoom. Um, and even uh, even today, uh, the, ser the family that I served, um, they had people join us via Zoom. Um, webcasting is becoming uh, a big component of services that we offer. Um, we also offer an in-house web streaming service as well, which is a bit different and a bit unique um, because it offers two perspectives. You get to see uh, the front of the chapel where the officiant is and also where the, the casket is, but then you get another view of the family and some of the people in attendance. Um, so that is definitely something that we provide. Uh, it's definitely something that our families uh, appreciate, but it's definitely becoming more and more prevalent. Um, and we're happy to offer it. Uh, to add to that, we also are able to offer the recordings of services to families as well, which is nice. Mm, and that and that does sound like it as well too. And uh, what's coming up for Brett Schwartz of um, Goldstein Rosenberg's um, Rayfield Sachs uh, Funeral Home? I'll find out just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios, and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, International Warming Author Mia Molson's The Missing. We'll be back with Brett Schwartz of uh, Goldstein's Rosenberg's uh, Rayfield Sachs Funeral Home after this time. We're back with Brett Schwartz of uh, Philadelphia's uh, Goldstein's of uh, Rosenberg's. Ray Field Sachs Funeral Home here on the Mike Wagner Show. I hope everybody got that right here. We'll be testing afterwards as well, too. And, um, you know, just a couple of things. Uh, how can people reach you and um, where can they find you and how can they get a hold of you for consultation and planning a funeral? Absolutely. So um, it, 
most traditional way by phone, 215-927-5800. Um, also, uh, come visit our website, www.goldsteinsfuneral.com. Uh, my personal email is brett, B-R-E-T-T, at goldsteinsfuneral.com. Um, I would say to come to our website, though, we have a lot of information there. Uh, we certainly try to educate uh, our families and make them as informed as they can be to help them make the best decisions for their loved ones. Um, so, yeah, phone, email, website, whatever works best, whatever is easier. Um, we are always willing to accommodate uh, any way we can to help our families, especially in forms of communication. And we'll certainly do that as well, too. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in a career? That's tough. Um, you know, if I had to say who was the biggest influence, I don't think I could really pick one person. One of the things that makes me um, different and a bit fortunate is that when I came into the business, there were a number of funeral directors that had been there um, for a, a range of years, ranging on 50 years to 20 years, 30 years and everywhere in between. And I was able to learn bits and pieces from all of them um, to really kind of become the funeral director I am today because everyone, you know, we all, we all serve our families in a similar fashion. You know, there's a, um, there's a way that you go about doing things when you sit down family to make arrangements, you collect the information, you listen to things they have to say, you walk them through the funeral service uh, step by step as far as what they want to create a, a loving tribute for their loved one that had passed. Um, but we all have a different style. Um, you know, we all have a different way. We all have a different affect when we speak to our families. Um, and I like to think that over the years, I kind of gleaned from all of the funeral directors that I trained with and kind of took bits and pieces from everything, I took the mm. best of, of what I learned from everybody to, uh, to become the funeral director I, I am and to kind of hone the style that I have over the years. And that's certainly amazing as well, too. And of course, we learn from that. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, anybody in terms of a family that I might serve or somebody that might want to come into the, to the funeral profession? In general, in general, coming in funeral procession, that's another one to uh, touch on as well. You know, in general, and uh, who wants to get in the funeral procession? In general, um, in general, I'd like to think that I have my favorite quote, Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt said, uh, the past is history. The future is a mystery. Uh, but today is present. And uh, that's why we call it, uh, excuse me. But today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. Um, <laughs> you got to live in the here and now because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. If there's anything that I've learned in this industry, in this profession, it's that you might not wake up tomorrow. Doesn't matter really? how healthy you are. Doesn't matter how you eat. Doesn't matter how much you exercise. You could take the healthiest pe person in the world. I heard about somebody recently that was rowing in a regatta. Peak physical health. Had a heart attack in a winning race, won the regatta, had a heart attack. Young, wow. young man. George Burns, 101 years old, drank every day, smoked cigars every day, 101. You never <laughs> know. You have to live for today. Leave the past in the past. Don't worry about the future because you don't know what it's going to bring and you can't control it either way. Live for today. Mm -hmm. um, that would be my be my best advice for, for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, my best advice for someone considering coming into the funeral profession, um, think long and hard. Um, if it's a calling, it's a calling, and that's great. But understand that with, with, um, with great reward um, and a lot of um, gratification you get from serving families um, comes a lot of you know, hardship's not the right word, but you just have to be prepared that you are, you know, especially if you're an owner, 24-7. You are on call. You need to be available. Um, you need to know that you're going to be putting in long hours, sometimes high-stress situations. Um, and you need to be prepared emotionally for what's to come. But if it's truly a calling, if you truly want to serve families, then by, by all means, um, you know, start by calling a funeral home saying, I'd like to come in. I'd like to talk to you. Um, I'm interested. I'm curious, but I don't know. 
visit a mortuary school. There are uh, funeral service programs all over the country. Again, um, you know, Goldstein's Rosenberg, Rayfield, Sack, the Philadelphia area. If you're anywhere nearby and you want to stop in and talk to me, I'm more than happy to share my time. If you want to email me, if Brett at goldsteinsfuneral.com. If you want to call me, 215-927-5800. I am more than happy to listen and answer any questions you have. That goes for any family in need as well. Um, whether it is an immediate need situation or, or an advanced need, if you're interested, you know, one of the services we offer is prearranging funerals, uh, which we haven't discussed yet. And that means you are essentially arranging a funeral in advance. That could be one year, two years, could be 40 years. It doesn't mm. matter. And there's a lot of benefits to that. That's not something we've touched on. I figured we would get to that at some point later in the interview. Um, we can touch on it now or not, but nonetheless. You, you, you know what? I think that's a really good point as well, too. We cover so much ground. And, um, you know, let's let's go ahead with that, because like I said, tomorrow never knows. So and I think that is a really good idea. I'm glad you touched on that. Sure. Thank you for saying so. I do appreciate that. So one of the services we do offer, and I, I will start off by saying that I cannot, cannot, cannot recommend it more because it is truly a gift to your family, is prearranging a funeral. And that's going to start with something that people are not really comfortable with. It's always been taboo. You need to talk about death. People don't like to do it, but you know what? There's only two certainties in life. Death and taxes true now some people don't pay their taxes and we're not going to go down that road <laughs> but everybody's going to die at some point and so why not plan for it why not have a discussion with your family so they don't have the burden of having to make these decisions once you're gone um and that's really what pre-arrangement's all about there are other benefits to it yes but the main motivation is let me plan my funeral. Let me tell my family what I want and let me plan my funeral in advance from start to finish so that when my time comes, all they have to do is review the information that's there, have a handful of conversations and the funeral will take place. Um, I can tell you that in my experience, seeing families that I have served um, where prearrangements were not done, where people had to make arrangements and make decisions for their loved one that had passed in a time of grief and mourning. Um, it's, it's really hard. It's really hard. And nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to have to worry about what was dad's social security number? What was his mother's maiden name? I mean, there's information that they might not know, they might not have access to at the time, that they can't recall, that they don't want to be bothered with so many things and and they don't have to all it takes is having a conversation and some planning and all that can be avoided um so it is truly a gift and really it's it's a matter of sitting down as someone has passed and, and getting all that information and making all those plans and you're just doing it however far in advance that you're doing it um and the way that it works is simple you have a consult with myself or one of my partners one of the other directors at the firm um, usually lasts an hour or two. It can happen via Zoom. It can happen over the phone and it can happen by email. Um, it's best to sit down with one of us, but if that's not a possibility or it's not wanted, that's fine. Um, we take some information. We go through everything step by step and we make some choices. We drop some paperwork and that's it. Um, I can tell you that another one of the benefits is, is no matter how far in advance the plans are made, we lock in our charges. The funeral homes charges are locked in. So if you make a prearrangement today and it's not needed for 20 years, all those years of inflation are not to be worried about. I like that. That is a really yeah. good idea. And once again, uh, how can people get a hold of you, especially for prearranging? Now that you brought that up, where can how can people get a hold of you once again? Uh, again, I would start at our website because there's a lot of information there. That's www.goldsteinsfuneral.com. Uh, phone 215-927-5800. Uh, also email brett, B-R-E-T-T -T, at goldsteinsfuneral.com. Uh, if you would prefer to speak with someone else, you could certainly do that as well. You can always <laughs> email info at goldsteinsfuneral.com as well. Um, but I am more than happy to answer any questions that I can for anybody. Um, I always like to tell my families, my number one job is to educate and help. Number one jobs, excuse me. Um, you know, because people don't know and they don't know what they don't know. So sometimes they don't even know the right questions to ask. And that's where I come in. I'm here to help. I'm here to hold their hands. 
walk them through it, um, whether it's in advance or whether it's in a time of need. Mm -hmm. And certainly very important as well. Once again, we're with um, Philadelphia Coroner, Vice President, Funeral Director, uh, Brett Schwartz of Goldstein's, Rosenberg's, uh, Ray Phil Sachs, a funeral home on the Mike Wagner Show. Brett, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot from you. Looking forward to having thank you again you, soon. Keep it. us up to date. Keep in touch. And once again, what's your website? How do people contact you? And where can people get more information about your services, especially pre-planning and more? Sure. Uh, again, so I'm Brett Schwartz, Goldstein's Rosenberg's Ray Phil Sachs Funeral Home, uh, www.goldsteinsfuneral.com. Uh, Brett, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at goldsteinsfuneral.com or phone 215-927-5800. We will certainly do that. Once again, Brett, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. Wish all the best. And Brett, you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate that. And listen, if there's a quiz about my the name of my firm, that's fine. But if you ask me to recant everything that you say with regard to sponsorships and all the podcast platforms the, uh, that you're on, I don't think I can do it. <laughs>